Thanks to more love bugs you have now tuned in to my Black Ink Crew recap. I was going to say finale, but we all know it's a finale recap. Okay, guys, be sure to subscribe if you have not yet done so. Also, be sure to share this video where we like to share videos. And check out my other channel, Some More Love TV, because I have my Love & Hip Hop Reunion Part 2 recap on there. Okay, guys, all right. So, we start off with Teddy. He's picking up Sky from Arizona. He done took a plane, honey. He is in love. It is like a whole different type of Teddy. He's all romantic and stuff. And we're talking about some relationships and all that. I'm like, where did this Teddy come from? All of a sudden, he got... He got hypnotized my, by some Sky, honey. This done made him look at her in a whole different light. So when she comes, she jumps on him just the same way that she had jumped on Bobby when Bobby had came out of jail. Y'all remember that? I was like, okay. And um, they kiss and everything. So when she talks to him, she tells him that Bobby stole all of her money. He done freaking cleaned out all of her accounts, took her money, and he's ghost. He is gone. And she's like, you know, she's real disappointed about that. He ain't never come to visit her or anything like that. Just took out all her money and is out. Oh, he's no longer engaged to Anya. He does want to repair their relationship, but it seems like it's a long time coming. And I doubt she's the type to just let things go so easily. I mean, she done broke up. She foot bad. She, she had to get like a whole bunch of different types of surgeries and it's all because of him. So maybe she just had to reevaluate everything. She seems like a strong person and I think she just got caught up in everything. Ted, he got Sky like the whole royal treatment. He got her the spa treatment, you know, rubbing her up, getting her nice and clean, got a nice hotel. Then he bust out with the white shirt, the white collar shirt real quick. He had the fresh red and white fitted. He had a white blazer on. And then he also had like roses, all rose petals all over the bed. Like just looking immaculate, like just crazy. It was, it was amazing. And she comes to him to where he had this little romantic dinner set up with candlelights and everything. And she has on like this red hot dress. And I'm like, wow, they matching. This is too cute. He done switched it up on us. Like, what Teddy is this? This is going to be the new Teddy we about to see. Caesar done grew up, so he got to grow up too. You can't be the only playboy up in there. <laughs> uh, Kwani and Puma, they go to see a marriage counselor. And the marriage counselor just so happens to be the penis doctor from like a few episodes ago who was supposed to be clipping uh, old stuff. So he tells, well, Kwani, she tells the doctor all about how Caesar came to her house and she felt threatened. I feel like <sighs> she was doing too much. Like she's crying. I, I don't know. I feel like she overreacted. Like she has this war mentality. We are in the war zone type of thing. Like it wasn't even that serious. It was like they were meeting up for business. It was not to come jump him or anything like that. And if she wanted to really know, she could have had a good conversation as opposed to getting all loud and crazy and bringing your crazy family around the shop to, to what, to fight them? You taking three women to go fight this dude and, and Duchess and all of them? It just, it wasn't really making any sense. It's like those are people that you really, you, you gotta be careful with. Like Duchess bringing her into her circle and stuff and then all of a sudden she just flips on her like that. Like wh where's the friendship? That's not a real friendship. Like I took you to Paris with me. I ain't have to take you nowhere. I mean she wasn't the best host or anything like that but she took her nonetheless and she knew that she was having issues that she was dealing with. Sassy and Dee Dee, they were strolling down, I think, Harlem or something like that here in New York. And they go to this abandoned apartment. When they do, they sit down. And it was like almost like a picnic type of setting the way it looked. And then Sassy just lays it on her that she would like her. She, she rented out that apartment that's hers now. And she would like her to come and live with her. At first, Dee Dee seemed like she was a bit overwhelmed by it all. And she's just like... Mm, like that's a big step, girl. I don't know. But she thought about it, contemplated, and she ended up saying, yeah, she's going to. So, if we see the cops going to the house next season, we know why. <laughs> now, hopefully things work out with them. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm still, I still don't know Didi too well, so I can't really say anything about her. 
I just don't know. I'm kind of like her mother, like hoping that this is like a genuine relationship and she's not trying to just come up or get her face out there or her brand out there or something like that. Like all of a sudden pop up with it. I mean, yeah, it's good to brand yourself, whatever, if you have some type of business. But I just feel like I hope it's genuine for her. Because Sassy seemed like she's all in it. Kathy comes up to the shop and she's smiling in like this light pink shirt that she had on like a blouse and I'm like she probably already looked at the test because for her to be smiling you, you don't smile when you're about to find out the results to a test especially something as as, as serious as this one so it says you are 99.99 percent Richard that's his name right Richard the father and everyone's just like wow and He's like that he did that out of spite. And I'm like, oh, <sighs> if I could have threw something at him, I would have. Because that's nothing to play with. That's how women do stuff like that. And then dudes get all mad and then they don't want to support the kids. But he did the same thing. What if she would have did something like that? Like he would have wanted to get a DNA test. I mean, she too didn't seem like she was too confident because she was a little promiscuous back in those days. But for him to do that, and then now this is on your son's, like, this is a permanent place of history. This is always going to be something that he can look back on this episode or those episodes and see that you kind of denied him and played a game and tried to say that you weren't his father. That's messed up. I mean, we didn't, kind of, we didn't really believe it too much anyway because we, like, oh, took the test. Mm, that's when he was high back in those days and getting all intoxicated and all that we can't really i don't know about him and these tests <laughs> he probably done did it wrong because you know they do have the at-home test so it was possible for him to be able to do it but yeah he didn't do it he just lied about it and, and was being super petty and super stupid and she was like you know what at the end of the day don't apologize to me you gotta apologize to him and I don't know if she, she probably told him because, you know, she the type to go ahead and tell kids everything that they don't need to know. But, um, yeah, so he's going to have to go ahead and apologize to the little boy. Duchess and Skye go to her old house, to Skye's old house, because she's been staying, I think she said she's been staying at Duchess' house for a while. And she heard that Bobby's been crashing up in her house. So she's, she's a little reluctant to see what's going on, but she opens up the door and she sees a vibrator in the bathroom. So that means he was bringing chicks up to the place. And she says that his stuff ain't even all that good. It don't even work right. So that's probably why they had the vibrator up in there. And she said that he's sick. But she didn't really say, like, you know, what type of illness he had. But, of course, we can all come to the conclusion that he most likely has diabetes. Because when she was throwing out everything of his, she threw out his clothes. She threw out his Timberlands. She threw out his sneakers some jordans i know somebody downstairs was happy i hope it was a bum too that way they could get some good good you know they could be walking around in style as they pedal in the streets so yeah he she threw out everything even the last thing that she threw out was the insulin and she threw out the vibrator everything because you know at the end of the day she's disrespected that he did all of that and he cleaned out her bank account so you want to leave your stuff up in there the yeah, peep that she didn't have a bed, though. I mean, times could be hard or whatever. But I would think that Black Ink would pay enough. Well, probably after this season, she could probably get something. But, yeah, I would think that they can be pay enough that you can get those beds. But I remember when I first moved into my last apartment, we had something like that. Like, to start off with, when we first moved into the apartment. Yeah, them little beds. But they don't last long unless you get the real good ones. Then you got to spend money, so you might as well just buy a, mat a real mattress. So they have a fashion show and Walter's the one that's supposed to be walking in it. And he looks real good. I'm like, okay, go ahead, Walter, you walk. And we have Puma also. He's going to be walking in it. But Walter's like, he didn't even know that Puma was going to be in there. He actually invited the crew over. But they come super late anyway. They It, it was like after the show. Then Puma, he wants to be him, so run up on him, run up on him. And he tries to run up on Caesar. Like, yo, yo, what's good? Yo, what's good? And then his crew, his people that work at his shop, because from what it looked like to me, that was like a store, a supermarket, 
that is super close to Puma Shock. Because if you guys seen my video that I reposted because it got taken down with my channel, um, he he's actually not too far from that supermarket. He's like maybe a block away. So I guess that's why all his crew was there. Plus they were there to support him. And Kwani was there as well. And I actually, I had seen this video last year, I think it was like October, September, or sometime in the summer. I can't really remember too well. But I remember I had talks about it on my channel that I don't have anymore. And um, yeah, a lot of things that were put out there, they got deleted. Like the actual fight scenes had initially got deleted from a lot of the channels that I had seen up. And also that video, that cell phone video where that she was like, y'all ain't do nothing to me. What? All y'all did was mess up my hair. Look, that video she had deleted a little after everything had occurred. But she did put it up like right after the fight. Because she was, I guess, so tight. And she, but then she realized like, okay, this is going to go everywhere. But they got it. Everybody got it. Um, so Kwani, it's, it seems like from what Duchess and them were saying that Kwani kind of pulled her hair. Or no, it was one of... One of Puma's friends, girls, dragged Duchess down. I'm like, what? Why are y'all even in this? You trying to get faints? Dragged Duchess down while another girl was trying to hit her as well. And then Kwani was trying to kick her. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I didn't even know it was that crazy. Like, those little parts. I didn't know that Kwani was involved with it as well. And when they go to... Oh, and oh, I almost forgot a vital part. This dude, Puma, tried to pull out a bottle to crack his head. And I'm like, wow, it's crazy how friends could become... People that were so good to each other, grew up together, they could become such freaking enemies. That's ridiculous. So now, when Puma goes to see... Has like a little lunch with Kwani and her mom. Her mom is like she finally... Res she respects him now because he did what he had to do after they tell her the story of everything that went down. And I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, I feel like the mom's just full of drama. The daughter doesn't fall far from it because she's kind of the one that I feel like started all this. And, you know, I'm not I'm not somebody that's against Kwani for the most part because I haven't seen her do anything crazy until this point. I'm just like, I don't really agree with her at all. And I just feel like the mom is condoning such foolish behavior. And this is what it takes for her to respect you. This wasn't about protecting his family because there was nobody getting hurt. No one was about to get hurt before. So this was just a foolish, foolish fight that came about for no reason where a lot of people could have got really hurt even worse than what it was. And for her to be like, oh, yes. And the daughter seemed like she's on some war pack too, like... Yeah, it is, it's just going to, we need to move to Atlanta because it's just going to keep on happening. I'm like, but Puma, he's just like, you know what? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not running from anything. And he doesn't really like change. He likes the fact that he lives in New York. And at the end of the day, if he does leave, that means that he's not going to be on the show anymore. And that's a major source of their income as well as his, his runway things that he does. And his, I think he has a clothing line. And a lot of his clientele or people that he works with, his connections are here in New York. And um, there was something else that he has. Well, the, the Inc. 124. And so many things that are connected to New York that I don't really think that right now would be the best time for them to leave anyway. So he's probably thinking a lot about finances and things like that. And being smart, you know. Um, yeah, but that was pretty much the re reunion. I mean, the the finale. The last thing that they showed was Duchess and Caesar getting tattoos on their knuckles. That's one thing I would not get any tattoos on my hands because, first of all, they fade too much. They fade too quickly. Maybe I would. No, I, I was gonna say maybe I would get something like right here if it's like really like somebody that I wanna put their name or. I don't even know about all that name stuff yet. Let's not even let's not even pretend. I don't know, like a symbol or something, maybe. But other than that, mm-mm. Because -mm. your hands are the first things to fade because they're always out in the sunlight. Unless you're gonna keep your hands in your pocket all the time. And they both get some. I didn't like the tattoos at all. One of them says black ink. The other one says Duchess. 
And I'm just like, okay, yeah. Congratulations to you guys. You're matching even more now. You have the crowns. Now you have the words on your knuckles. What else are you going to do? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay fabulous, live free, and soar limitless. Let me know what you thought about this episode down below. Laters.